Hello everybody, this is Dave Wallace and welcome to my video this week. Uh, last week I shared with you my experience that I had uh, that I had encountering uh, some many hoonies while I was working as a security guard uh, at the Apana site just above the Turtle Bay Resort. And from what I saw and uh, a lot of people watched it, and many people are asking for more stories that are similar to that. So I decided to share another story that's based on an experience that I had while I was working as a security guard. And this story takes place in um, 1988, and I had just returned from, uh, from Utah back to Hawaii, and I was hired as a security guard at the Mormon temple, the LDS uh, temple in Laie. So my job was to secure the grounds at night, make sure that um, nobody was going in and out. Uh, there was a lot of weird things happening during that time. Um, we had uh, groups of uh, people not associated with our church or belief uh, breaking into the grounds and doing things, strange things. So my job was to uh, try and prevent that from happening. Anyway, on Thanksgiving, 2000, on, <laughs> on Thanksgiving 1988, um, after I reported to work, and I, it seemed like a normal night, nothing dramatic was happening. Um, everything was calm and uh, the patrons that did come stayed and went home and um, by 12 o'clock at night everything was shut down and so I did my checking and locked all of the gates making sure that everybody was gone checked the interior of the uh, temples nobody's there and so everything was okay until the cleaning crew arrived Normally I take my breaks about uh, 2.30, 3 o'clock and I go home and eat, a, eat my lunch. And so I did that and I returned to the temple quickly, promptly. And after returning to the temple I made my rounds around and checked and everything was secure. Gates were locked. So I drove my car which was a Chevy Nova at that time that had a bench seat and a front seat. And I parked my car in such a way where the driver's, um, the passenger side uh, car door was facing directly to the temple. And uh, being facing directly to the temple, I lifted my both of my feet up and uh, basically lie down in the front seat with my back pr um, propped it up against the uh, driver's door and while I was doing that and just enjoying uh, looking at the temple and if you drive by the temple late at night you're gonna notice that all of the lights are on as well lit um, the grounds itself is well lit the temple is uh, illuminated all white and shiny and lights up everything around you can see it all over the place so this is the conditions that we were um, so I'm sitting there minding my own business and all of a sudden I hear a voice, a very familiar voice, a woman's voice, come into my ear and says, David John, close your eyes now. And my eyes are open and there's nothing I could do and it went shut right down. And so I'm sitting there in the front seat of the car, my eyes are closed, and the worst thing you can do as a security guard is have someone catch you sleeping. <laughs> so that's the first thing that went through my mind is, oh no, I wonder if somebody's going to walk by and catch me sleeping. So I tried opening my eyes, and I couldn't. I tried to raise my brows, I couldn't. So since my brows wouldn't work, I started push, pushing up with my eyes with my fingers. And that wouldn't work. It wouldn't open my eyes. And while I'm fighting this and wondering what the heck's going on, 
I hear something really unusual coming from the side gate and the side gate is a Roth iron gate and I normally secure it, uh, tie it up with a chain and padlock it and uh, that's the way we, I secure that gate. Anyway, I hear that gate open and so uh, the temple is off to my right and the gate is slightly off to my left so I turn my head and even though my eyes are closed I can see shadows and these shadows look like human beings they look like human beings and two shadows come walking through the gate and walk straight through uh, from the gate to my car and they split it up one shadow walks and stands at my feet the other one comes and stands right behind me this person standing right behind me every time he breathes out I can smell garlic on his breath <laughs> so I know it's a real person breathing garlic on me and so I'm trying to fight it and um, as soon as I start trying to sit up and to uh, prop myself up more this entity jumps on me and jumps on my chest and starts pushing me down into the sea and for anyone who experienced a choking ghost where a spirit comes um, to you at night and pushes you down into the bed this is what was happening to me except this was in the front seat of my car late at night so this entity pushing me down and I'm wondering why is this happening and I'm trying to fight it and the more I fight against it um, I feel like something is wrapping around me and coiling around me like an anaconda snake and it's binding me tying me up and keeping me immobile where I cannot move and so <clears throat> The harder I fight, the more bound I feel, but as soon as I start relaxing, it relaxes. And so I, um, I get the idea that he wants me to stay quiet and stay low. So um, by behaving that way, I, I, I don't have to face more pain. So while I'm doing this and I'm trying to um, reason and think about what's happening, I see more shadows start coming out of the gate and as I start counting them as they start coming there's a total of 18 of them that comes out and as they come out I can hear the sound of the getta cluck 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 yeah the sound of the getta and for those of you who don't know what a getta is a getta is the Japanese wooden shoe that both um, the men and the women wore so I could hear them and they would walk through the gate and come straight towards my car and uh, they walk behind me and I could hear them passing by and the women that were uh, I know there were women passing by because as they passed by they would giggle and kind of like hee 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 make fun uh, kind of like they're having fun and the men who would pass by there they sound pretty grumpy but they make it kind of like grunting noise grumbling sound sound like they're grumbling and so uh, these male and female passing by and by the time the last person passed by um, I feel the entities at my feet and behind me suddenly disappear they move on and as soon as they move on this entity that's on top of me and holding me down leaves and I jump up in uh, from the seat and I start looking behind to my right and uh, if there's anybody there I would see them in the back of my car but there was no one there so I start up my car and I drive through the parking lot shining my lights everything and 
<laughs> looking through the bushes, checking the yards that's uh, around the temple. There's nothing, no, nobody around. So the next day when, um, you know, the grounds crew and some of the uh, other temple members started coming in, I started talking with the supervisors <laughs> and uh, told them what happened. And they look at me and they say, Dave, this is the temple. What do you expect? <laughs> okay. And so it was no big deal. <laughs> it was no big deal to anyone. Like, uh, you know, this comes with the territory. I didn't fully appreciate the uh, this experience until a good three months later when the grounds people who were cleaning up the areas around the temple um, suddenly came across a abandoned graveyard, small little graveyard uh, containing about 18 to 20 um, headstones that were cut with long stones and Japanese characters on them. Now for me, learning about these uh, gravestones and the grave markers, um, for me it was kind of like a sign like these uh, spirits realized that they were going to be discovered. And it was their way of saying, we're here, come find us. <laughs> okay, so this is a story of uh, my experience at the Hawaii LDS Hawaii Temple in uh, 1988. And this is Dave Wallace. If you enjoy what I share here, please share with other people and subscribe. Okay. And um, again, on this Saturday, July 11th, I'll be holding a live um, one hour. I'm, I'm, I'm putting aside one hour, but um, I'm having a live Facebook uh, chat and I'll be sharing my experience, uh, my first near-death experience uh, that I had. And the reason why I'm sharing it on the 11th of July is that it's my brother's birthday. My oldest brother, Bill, uh, it's his birthday. And uh, if it wasn't for my brother Bill, I wouldn't have experienced my first near-death experience. Okay, so this is Dave Wallace and saying aloha until we see each other again. Bye-bye.